morning, everybody. Where are all your friends? <laughs> Certainly a change. We've had a number of people were live streaming this uh, off of our website, so that'll be happening in the future as well. So if this happens again and next week or so, depending on how things go, we'll, we'll be here, but you may not be here. So just a couple things I want to go through, um, obviously with the virus. Um, we have a, a handout at the, at the entrances, just a kind of a nice little faith response to the coronavirus. Um, just a couple things off of that. It's like there's enough for everybody. So don't buy all of the toilet paper in the entire state of Wisconsin and pack your basement with it. We can share. Just kind of have that sense of, of uh, you know, let's, we're in this together, and if everything crashes, we're all crashed together, whatever that means, and where we're going with it. I got, the other part is to protect the vulnerable, having a sense of sacrifice for others, and especially as we're hearing, you know, those, the elderly and those who are in special needs, just to kind of keep an eye on them and your family and friends and neighbors as well. Um, again, the basic sense of loving our neighbor and living the virtues. So, again, just a thing to, some things to think about. Uh, the, the other sheet here talks about something about washing your hands for at least... You got that one? You got that message? 20 seconds. You got to time it out. 20 seconds of washing hands. 20 seconds. Yes. Not 20 minutes. <laughs> As you, I'm sure you know also, the bishop has said that the, there is a dispensation. You don't have to be here. So if over this week, we don't know where it's coming. I'm hearing it's been uh, Fond du Lac, Winnebago County. Again, a lot of, none of us have really been tested, so we don't really know what's happening. So the precautions are there. So just kind of be with that. But further notice will come out. We're talking a little bit about do we actually cancel the masses over the next weeks? And that will, notice will come out again. I suspect that... Even if it's just myself, we'll be here and live streaming, whatever it is. I need somebody over there to live stream it, but um, we'll do the best we can to, to get the Eucharist out. There are other, other places that we'll be live streaming as well and having the Mass on TV. A couple things for us here. Um, the parish-wise, the, again, the attempts right now are we'll be having the Mass on weekdays and on the weekends. Um, but anything else outside of the liturgies, outside of the Masses, will not be happening. So any committees, anything that's happening that's scheduled through the parish has been canceled. There's no liturgy of the word with me, liturgy of the word for the children. All of this is being just let go until, again, until further notice. The water fonts are empty. That's a lot of people touching, touching that, so that's finished. As well as um, if you're accustomed to receiving Eucharist on the tongue, please refrain from that. Again, we're, saliva, saliva is a big thing. We will not be on a regular basis going to the homebound, hospitals, nursing homes. I was anointed somebody last night at Aurora Bay Care, but typically, other than anointing, we will not be visiting at this time. So if you're in that position, just to know that. Um, today, for this Mass, the, we will not have, be passing the basket. Um, so we will have baskets. The ushers will be at the entrances as you leave, if you would like to leave your envelope or donation there. Um, Sign a piece is a, we will wave the sign a piece, so we're just kind of adjusting, but making things move forward, but we're just adjusting to where we need to be. Okay. Um, again, the, the sense of who we are as church is not only, only here, but as we go through these next weeks or so, however this go, pans out, just to kind of keep that love and presence of Christ and respecting others and doing the best we can to be here with us as well. Okay. And we need lots of voices singing, right? So... Patty's going to do her best, but we're all going to be here together and uh, sing as well. So, as in, there's no canter is what I'm saying. So, Patty's on. Right. Good morning. Welcome to Resurrection on the third Sunday of Lent. We will begin our service with binder number 28, Jerusalem, my destiny, verse 3. I have 
fixed my eyes on your hills. Jerusalem, my destiny, though I cannot see the end for me, I cannot turn away. We have set our hearts for the way. This journey is our destiny. Let no one walk alone. The journey makes us one. In my thirst you let me drink the waters of your life. Here among you I have met the Savior Jesus Christ. I have fixed my eyes on your hills, Jerusalem, my destiny. Though I cannot see the end for me, I cannot turn away. We have set our hearts for the way. This journey is our destiny. Let no one walk alone. The journey makes us one. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. Amen. We gather in prayer again, not just for ourselves, but for all those who are out there listening to us, being with us, and for all the world in which we live all the challenge and we know that we come together in the love and the patience of our God to live our life here at this time. Just take a moment to remind ourselves to reconcile ourselves to the oneness and the presence of our God. And if you're able, I ask you to please kneel. As we pray, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have made these sins in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have done. And my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask that the parents of the church, all the saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst 
with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? A little more, and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding your hand as you go, holding in your hand as you go, the staff which with you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. If today hear, you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus had to pass through Samaria, and his journey brought him to a Samaritan town named Shechem, near the plot of land which Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. This was the site of Jacob's well. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down at the well while his disciples went into town to buy food. The hour was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water as well, and Jews have nothing in common with Samaritans. But Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. You are a Jew. 
How can you ask me, a Samaritan and a woman, for a drink? If only you recognize God's gift and who it is that is asking you for a drink, you would have asked him instead, and he would have given you living water. Sir, you do not have a bucket, and this well is deep. Where do you expect to get this living water? Surely you don't pretend to be greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it with his children and his flocks. Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give will never be thirsty. No, the water I shall give become a fountain within you, welling up to provide eternal life. Give me this water, sir, so that I won't grow thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. Oh, let all who thirst, let them come to the water. Go, call your husband, and then come back here. I have no husband. You are right in saying you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five and the man you are living with now is not your husband. What you have said is true. Sir, I can see you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you people claim that Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship God. Believe me, woman, an hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand while we understand what we worship, because salvation is from the Jews. Yet an hour is coming and is already here when authentic worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. Indeed, it is just such worshipers the Father seeks, for God is spirit, and those who worship God must worship in spirit and truth. I know there is a Messiah coming, the one called the Christ, when he comes, he will tell us everything. I am he, the one who is speaking with you. Oh, let all who thirst, let them come to the water. Jesus' disciples returned at this point, were surprised and animated that Jesus was speaking with a woman. However, none of them raised a question such as, what do you want of him, or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water jar and went into town. She said to the people, Come and see someone who told me everything I ever did. Could this not be the Messiah, the Christ? With that, they all set out from the town to meet him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he told them, I have food to eat, of which you do not know. At this, the disciples said to one another, Do you suppose that someone has brought him something to eat? But Jesus explained to them, Doing the will of the one who sent me and bringing God's work to completion is my food. Do you not have a saying? Four months more, and it will be harvest. Listen to what I say. Open your eyes and see. The fields are shining for harvest. The reaper already collects his wages and gathers his crops for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. Here we have the saying verified, one sows, another reaps. I sent you to reap what you had not worked for. Others have done the labor and you are sharing the fruits of their labor. Many Samaritans from that town believed in Jesus on the strength of the Samaritan woman's word of testimony. He told me everything I ever did. The result was that when the Samaritans came to Jesus at the well, they begged him to stay with them a while. So he stayed there two days and through his own spoken word, many more came to faith. As they told the woman, no longer does our faith depend on your story. 
we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this really is the Savior of the world. Oh, let all who thirst, let them come to the water. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Is it getting awkward yet? How do you greet people? You kind of walk up to each other and it's like, well, we used to shake hands, we used to pat each other on the shoulder, we used to get this close, now we're this close. There's a certain isolation and we're going to feel it more and more as the next week or so comes on. But that as we go through life, we're accustomed to being with each other. We're accustomed to saying things, to treating each other in certain ways. We can't go the rest of our lives, hopefully, with elbowing each other for the next 50 years. How do, how do we live? How do we know that this is who we are? Temporarily, hopefully, but we will know this isolation. The woman at the well, she knew what it meant to be isolated. That was her life. She knew exactly what she could do, what she was about, because in her story, she came to the well at noon when it was hot. The women in the village, they always came out early in the morning before the sun really baked them. And so they came out together, but they, during during the previous times, they made it very clear to this woman, you are not welcome. Stay your distance. Stay away from us. We obviously believe different. We live different. We do not want to associate with you. So that's why this woman was there at the well all by herself. And much to her surprise, not just a woman from the village or somebody else local coming in, but all of a sudden, this obviously a Jew went up to her, a male went up to her, breaking all kinds of social contracts at that time, and asked her very simply, give me a drink. It's the most profound statement, I think, that Jesus spoke in the gospel. Because he broke through and allowed others, this woman in particular, to see who he was and what he was about. Again, previously, her contact with other Jews were, you are unclean, and they ran away. Jesus is saying, I am above and beyond that. That's not my way. Please, give me a drink. Again, in her astonishment, she didn't know what to do or how to handle that. But Jesus knew that as as he was living his life, that he had to be true to himself. In the fullness of spirit, in obedience to his Father in heaven, this was his mission. No matter what happened, what the ramifications were, he went up to her and said, give me a drink. Now as she thought about it, she realized, as he said, no, you have five husbands. And again, it wasn't a judgment. As Jesus said, I just note this. This is what, who you are. This is what you're about. Because at that time, divorce was a very easy thing for the male. So the male of the family was able to, the husband was able to say, you know, I didn't like how you fried my eggs this morning. Be gone. I don't like how you're doing this. You're not pleasing me in whatever way. Be gone. I'm going to divorce you and take on somebody else, or maybe a second or a third wife. That was the way of the times. So we don't really know, even though this woman was ostracized, so something was going on with her as well. But we don't really know why she was divorced five times. Maybe in the end of it, she said, I've had enough of this system. I'm just going to be with this guy, and we're going to hang out on the edge of this whole thing because I'm not trying this again. You know, again, we, we don't know, but we do know, again, as Jesus said, he wasn't judging her. He wasn't isolating her, pushing her away. He went up to her and said, give me a drink, breaking through everything that was there for her, everything that she did not expect. And the real, the real amazing part of this story 
is as much as Jesus saying, give me a drink, as those moments in the scriptures that we heard is, is her saying and her actions of running back to the village. Remember, she was there by herself. She basically, it seems, has been isolated by the rest of the village, and now she's running back with all this enthusiasm, with all this spirit saying, you have to see this. This is amazing. She was totally transformed by those simple words, give me a drink. And as she lived out that out in her heart and soul, and as it came out of her, it changed her life, it changed her perspective, it changed her understanding of herself. And that's the true gift of our salvation. When we are in, a, in similar situations with each other, and watch what happens over this week, when somebody comes up to you, and we're not touching each other, but we're still speaking, and says something as simple as, give me a drink, or could you open the door for me, or how is your day, those are all lead-ins to be able to have a conversation of life, of faith, of hope. We don't realize what that simple conversation does to ourselves and to each other. Simple words, simple acknowledgement, just being with each other means that there is a community of love and faith and hope, and that is who God is. So we don't have to go outside of our normal lifestyle, our normal sense of who we are and how we speak to each other, to realize that that faith in God is already there. It's already a part of who we are. It's normal life. Just like the woman at the well is the, the well of Jacob, huge tradition, but there are wells all over the world. This is a picture of a person in, in Uganda, Life Water International Organization in the Busango village, is helping them to place wells and having that focal point when people are able to come together. Not just to draw water, but as Jesus says, to draw living water, a faith, a hope in each other, in our God, that brings us back together again and again and again. Again, a water well is the focal point of the community. For women, it's a place to meet, of meeting up and being able to interact. That interaction... Give me a drink. How is your day? How is your husband doing? How are your children? All of those are lead-ins, again, to how we share our faith, share that sense of community and faith and hope with each other. So again, keep this in mind as we're experiencing a little bit more of the isolation, how important those little words are, how important those little interactions are, whether they're over the Internet, whether they're on the phone, whether we're passing each other, trying to buy more toilet paper, whatever we're doing, just to be able to realize that that little bit can change our life, can change other people's lives. And just being able to speak words of faith and hope to each other and encourage each other, that's what our faith in church is all about. And all it was, very simple words. Give me a drink. As we pray the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And there you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Through our very simple words and how we live our lives expresses our faith and hope in our God, and so we offer our prayers that we may always, that we may always be open to the presence of God in our world today.
Please respond, merciful God, hear our prayer. For the church, that we can be a source of life-giving water to all those who thirst, we pray. Merciful God, hear our prayer. That the precious resource of water may be shared equitably by all, we pray. Merciful God, hear our prayer. For all who thirst for peace in the world, justice in our nation, reconciliation in our communities and families, that their thirst is quenched with the living water that Christ entrusts to our care, we pray. Merciful God, For those throughout the world suffering from the coronavirus, for from healthcare workers caring for them and researchers working to find out how to stop the spread of the virus and develop a vaccine, we pray. Merciful God, hear our prayer. For those who are outcast or living on the fringes of society, may the larger community find ways to embrace and include those on the margin, we pray. Merciful God, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, including those with addiction disorders, for those recovering from or getting ready for surgery, for those afraid of the future, we pray. For the living members of Resurrection Parish family, stewards of prayer, service, and sharing, we pray. Merciful God, hear our prayer. For the prayers in our hearts that we bring to the foot of the cross, we pray. Merciful God, hear our prayer. As we offer all of our prayers in the name of Jesus who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. With the gifts of bread and wine and the gifts of ourselves, let us sing number 497, As the Deer Longs, number 497 and on the screens. As the deer longs for flowing stream, so longs my soul. that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord. Be
Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked a Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her, and so ardently did he thirst for her, did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks, and with the angels praise your mighty deeds, as we acclaim. indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, that will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that had been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love that we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. 
Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles, the martyrs, and with all the saints, that we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Following always in the ways of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray through his words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us wave to each other a sign of peace. Christ peace. Peace with you. Christ peace. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my life, but only say the word. This is Jesus.
Let us sing number 603, Come to the Water, and on the screens. Number 603. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks. A couple of reminders. Yes. All March activities are canceled here at Resurrection, as was mentioned at the beginning, and also our daily Masses and weekend Masses will continue, but um, you have a dispensation for, uh, to the obligation to attend the Sunday Mass for the next three weeks, so during March. We will have it live streamed, though, so you can check it out on your computers. Our website. And website, it's at the website, right. And I checked it out this morning and it worked. It's there. Uh, also, if um, we have one pie, so whoever bids the highest <laughs> gets it. <laughs> so it might be the best pie sale we ever had. <laughs> we can do a bidding war. <laughs> and I, at a later right. date, it's we're going to do it. Yeah. But I believe that the person brought it in. It's a Durr County cherry pie. Like from Durr County cherries, and they made the pie. 
Yes, so go for it. And if the, any children didn't get the bulletins, they're at the little table in the front of church. But the saddest note of all, the, the challenge, the most out, challenging decision was, do we cancel the donuts? We canceled the donuts for this week. No donuts, I'm sorry. But we can make it through. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God.